Okay, so question 20, as you can probably already tell, is a big one, really, really calculation heavy, okay? But I'm gonna do my best to kind of talk you through it and, uh, and how I go through each stage here, all right? So a student investigates the reactions of two weak monobasic acids. So they both release just one hydrogen ion, okay? So we've got two hydroxypropanoic acid and butanoic acid. So question A, a student wants to prepare a standard solution of the two hydroxypropanoic acid uh, that has a pH of 2.19. So whenever they tell you the pH is something, just know that you're gonna have to work out hydrogen ion concentration or something, yeah? Plan how the student could prepare a 250 centimeter cubed um, solution uh, from 2-hydroxypropanoic acid. We should include the detail of the practical procedure, including appropriate quantities and the necessary calculations. Now this is of course a weak monobasic acid, so it exists in equilibrium, so it gives us the Ka value for the 2-hydroxypropanoic acid as well at that particular temperature. So how do we go about you know, finding out, well, what quantities of 2-hydroxypropanoic acid, the solid propanoic acid, we need to dissolve in 250 centimeter cubed to get that pH, okay? Well, what we need to do is find the hydrogen ion concentration first of all, okay? Because that will then help us decide on what the concentration of the acid needs to be, okay? So if we can find the hydrogen ion concentration, we can use the uh, expression for Ka to actually find the concentration of the acid. So first things first, hydrogen ion concentration is uh, anti-log minus pH. So that's pretty straightforward. That gives us um, 6.46 times 10 to the minus three, okay? So that's our hydrogen ion concentration. What I've done here is then write out the expression for Ka. Now, rather than use this big cumbersome um, uh, expression here, okay, this, this formula here, I've just called it HA, because at the end of the day, we've got uh, an acid that releases a hydrogen ion, okay? So Ka equals A minus uh, H plus all over HA, or just to make things simple, because these two can be assumed to be the same. When it dissociates, you get one hydrogen ion and one negative ion. So these two have the same value. So Ka equals H plus squared over HA. And all I've done is rearrange this because we want to make HA the subject. We need to know the concentration of acid that we need, okay? So HA concentration equals H plus squared over Ka. So that's 6.46 times 10 to the minus three over Ka, which they've given us 1.38 times 10 to the minus four. And that gives us this concentration of acid. So that's 0 0.032 moles per decimeter cubed. So that's the first stage. That's the first thing we need to find out. And that's the concentration of acid we need. All we need to do now is find out, well, how much acid do we need to put in 250 centimeter cubed to get that concentration? Well, the number of moles of acid needed for this, okay, is concentration times volume. We want this concentration. This is our volume, 250 over 1,000. So, of course, we need that many moles of acid to actually create that concentration. So 0 0.755. Of course, we can't count the number of moles. We can only count a mass. We can only measure a mass, really, when we're making these solutions. So the mass of acid needed is number of moles, which we've got now, times its molar mass, which I worked out as 90. Uh, so that's 6.8 grams of the 2-hydroxypropanoic uh, acid that we need to dissolve in 250 centimeter cubed to make a, this concentration of solution, which will give us this pH, okay? So there's a few steps involved there, which is why this is worth so many marks. But we're not done yet. What it also wanted is providing detail of the practical procedure. Now this should come straight from the textbook, okay? You should know how to make up a standard solution and that's what they're looking for here with all the details involved. So we dissolve our 6.8 grams of solid in about 100 centimeter cubed of distilled water in a beaker, okay? So in a separate, not straight into your graduated flask. You don't have to say about 100 centimeter cubed here, you can just say a small amount of water you know, but just enough to make sure it's dissolved. We then transfer that solution into a 250 centimeter cube graduated flask using a funnel 
you know what? You always get a mark for saying you use a funnel because it minimizes losses. What we then do is rinse the beaker and add to the flask, okay? And this, of course, also minimizes losses. You don't want to leave any of that acid left in the uh, beaker. You then make it up to 250 centimeter cube line with distilled H2O, and then uh, taking into account the meniscus, you could say there. Uh, and then, of course, last thing, you do get a mark for saying that you mix it thoroughly to make sure it's homogenous. So using key term there, okay? So I reckon there's probably three marks of the, of the eight there associated with um, this whole question, okay? So just pick your way through. This is a kind of, you know, it looks tough, uh, but you know, you know how to calculate hydrogen ion concentration. You should know the expression for Ka, and these are kind of bread and butter mole calculations here, okay? So not too scary when you break it down. Part B, uh, two hydroxypropanoic acid is slightly stronger than butanoic acid in terms of its uh, in terms of its ability as an acid. These two acids are mixed together in an acid-base equilibrium. Suggest the equilibrium equation. Identify the conjugate acid-base pairs. What they're saying is this is a stronger acid than the butanoic acid. So when you put them together, this is going to act as the acid, and this by definition is going to have to act as the base okay so when these react this is going to donate a proton and become this negative ion okay so it's lost the hydrogen ion here this one acting as the base is going to accept the proton and become this positive ion over here so what we've got is our acid acting as the acid in the initial case then it becomes this negative ion which can be called our conjugate base. So this is our acid base pair A. This is acting as a base, and once it's accepted that hydrogen ion, it will become the conjugate acid of that base because it can potentially uh, donate a proton in that form. Okay, so you know this is a perfect example of the type of thing they can ask you um, with conjugate acid base pairs. Okay, so be prepared to do this for you know various strange things that you've never come across, but the principle is the same one's acting as an acid, one's acting as a base. Okay, and you get the conjugate acid and base as a consequence. Now, part C, another big calculation, not so many marks attributed to this one, but I think it's probably a little more complex. Than, uh, than the one you've just done over here for eight marks. So a buffer solution okay, is prepared using 75 centimeter cubed of 0.22 molar butanoic acid, and it's reacted with 50 centimeter cubed of 0.185 molar sodium hydroxide. It also gives us the Ka value for the butanoic acid. Now it's broken it down. First step, calculate the pH of the 0.185 molar sodium hydroxide. Well, for this, we're going to need Kw. Kw equals hydrogen ion concentration times hydroxide ion concentration. Okay, so if we know the um, uh, concentration of hydroxide ions and we know Kw to be 1 times 10 to the minus 14, then we can rearrange this equation to give the hydrogen ion concentration. That's our key to finding pH, of course, isn't it? So hydrogen ion concentration equals Kw over OH concentration, which is, of course, the same as the uh, concentration of sodium hydroxide because it's a strong base, it fully dissociates. So you can assume that these are the same. And that gives us 5.405 uh, times 10 to the minus 14. And of course, to find pH, all we need to do is minus log base 10, that number, and it gives us 13.27 as a pH, okay? Now, they were talking about a buffer solution up here, and of course, they're actually going to ask us to find the pH of the buffer solution at 25 degrees, okay? So give your answer to two decimal places and show all your working. Now, they didn't give you much room here, really, okay? So I'm going to talk you through what I've done. First of all, we need to find the number of moles of acid and alkali involved. And that's pretty straightforward using concentration times volume. And I've done that because I wanted to know which was in excess. Okay. Now, we find the number of moles of acid to be 0 0.0165 and the number of moles of the alkali to be 9.25 times 10 to the minus 3. So that means our acid is in excess. Okay, So that, that's good. That means uh, all of the alkali has been reacted and all of that alkali will have turned into salt. 
okay? So um, our equation for this reaction, again, like I did before, I've just used HA here instead of using the cumbersome um, uh, formula for the butanoic acid. So the butanoic acid is represented by HA here, okay? So that reacts with sodium hydroxide to give uh, the salt, Na plus, A minus, and water, of course, okay? This is important. We're going to need this for our Ka expression. So we need to find the concentration of the A minus, okay? So the number of moles of NaOH is, of course, equivalent to the number of moles of A minus because it's a one-to-one -one, um, relationship here, stoichiometric relationship. So the number of moles of A minus is 9.25 times 10 to the minus 3, the same as the number of moles of alkali that we initially put into the reaction. Okay, so we're one to one reaction here. So that's our number of moles of A minus. Our number of moles of acid here. Now that's not the same as the initial number of moles of acid because, of course, some of it reacted, okay, to form the A minus. We need to find out how much reacted to form the A minus. So the number of moles of HA present in the buffer solution is our initial number of moles minus the number of moles that reacted with the uh, sodium hydroxide, which is 9.25 times 10 to the minus three. Well, where did I get this number from? Well, from the number of moles of alkali here, okay? Again, it's a one-to-one -one reaction. So if we had that many uh, moles of sodium hydroxide, 9.25 times 10 to the minus three, it will have reacted with the same number of moles of acid here, okay? So once the reaction's finished, because the acid was in excess, this is how much acid is left over. So this is the number of moles of acid left over in a buffer solution, which is very, very important, okay? So what we have are the number of moles of uh, salt and the number of moles of acid. Okay, and what we need is for our Ka expression, as you see down here, we need the concentration of HA, the acid, and we need the concentration of A minus, our salt. Okay, so all we need to do here, quite simply, is no concentration is number of moles over volume. Now, the volumes aren't what they give you up here 75 and 50. Why? Because they've been combined together, and I've just put that in green down here. The total volume, once they've been combined, is 125 centimeters cubed, and you always have to do this when calculating the uh, concentrations in buffer solutions. Make sure you've accounted for the fact that you've mixed two solutions together and you use the total volume. So all I've done here is calculate the concentrations of the salt and the acid separately, okay? So it's number of moles divided by volume for the A minus, that gives us uh, 0 0.074 moles per decimeter cubed, and the concentration of the acid, the same as number of moles over volume, and that gives us 0 0.058 moles per decimeter cubed. Now, we're nearly there. Um, we need to then, obviously, find the pH of this. Well, this is where our Ka expression comes in. We know this concentration of the salt, we know the concentration of the acid, we also know Ka because it gave it us way up here. There we go, okay? So that's our Ka value as well. So to find pH, of course, we need to focus on H plus concentration. So we rearrange it, H plus equals Ka times HA over um, A minus, okay? Which is 1.5 times 10 to the minus five over 0 0.058 divided by 0 0.074. And that gives us 1.18 times 10 to the minus five. That is our hydrogen ion concentration. And the last thing we need to do is of course, plug that into our pH equals minus log base 10 times hydrogen ion concentration. So we replace the number in there and we get 4.93 to two decimal places as it asks us to do in the question. So like I said, a lot of work to do here really for four marks, but um, the kind of standard procedure for finding a buffer solution pH 
is there okay you essentially you need somehow to find the concentration of acid the concentration of your salt and of course you need the ka and that means you can find your h plus concentration and therefore your pH okay so that is a very long and pretty complex question 20 uh, very calculation heavy but again with calculations it's practice 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 so that's question 20